Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like a trap dog, giving them all. Just like a million bucks, but things in his cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on now. Dig me. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man. Got a radio show. The only way to find your real purpose, your real mission in life, your real what for, the thing that you got to go get after is you got to connect with God. You have to connect with him because as your creator, no one knows better what you were made for than your maker. It just make a lot of common sense, don't it? I mean, really, you know, you, you, people kill me with, with with the lack of belief. I mean, you know, like all of this that we have today spun out from a cosmic ball of dust in the galaxy that cooled off and, and formed all these lakes and rivers and clouds and mountains and valleys and birds and animals and people from a co- cosmic speck of dust and that they act like there's no connection to a higher calling or a higher reasoning that, that's just you know and they, and they try to create for those that do believe this hocus pocus ritual this magical what is that there's no scientific i don't argue science i think that science is very real i think that science is very applicable i think that science helps us learn so many things but science ain't everything now you 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 might as well under that. There's some unexplainables that science can't wrap their mind around. So here they go with something else. And then you got the naysayers who who use that, the non-believers who use that as the proof that there is no higher calling or higher being. And I, I listen to me. I, I I don't really into explaining all that away. If that's how you feel, then go on and get to feeling how you feeling with it. But let me explain something to you. I just don't see how. I don't see how, man. What is this? What is this conscious that eats away at you from time to time? Where does the moral barometer come from that exists in your life? What what makes you know the difference between right and wrong? Did that come from that cosmic speck of dust that spun out of control and cooled this fiery hot ball down? And then these lakes and rivers and all the clouds and mountains got crew. What where did your conscious come from? What is your need to cry out from? What does the word Lord help me come from? Why when you get in a in a dark place and you whisper Jesus, where did it come from? Huh? What is that? What is that if you're driving on the road and your car caroms off a cliff? The words that come out your mouth, where, where them come from? Oh, Lord, help me. 
You know, what do, what do these promises come from that we make? These deals we cut that we make with a higher power. Why why when you're at your lowest moment, man, you 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 turn somewhere. Okay. Enough of that. I, I've I've explained my side of it. I, and as a matter of fact, God is really almost unexplainable to me. So really for me to sit here and try to explain, I'm really not that good of a guy. You know what I mean? I'm 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 not that person. So let me try to give you something real here. Okay. So this we didn't just had that moment. I had to get that off my chest. I want I want I want to share something with you about when you strike out to find your mission or how about when you strike out on your mission once you discover what your purpose is or let's let's simplify it what happens when you set a goal and you're ready to strike out on that goal what happens when you set an ambition in front of you or put something in your sights that you want to attain, that you want to become successful at. What's the mindset that you have to develop? There are three things you must first ask. You must then believe and you must then receive. Now the receive part, all these parts is, 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 is got to, thing to it you got to ask you just got to ask for it you know you've heard the scripture before you have not because you ask not why don't you ask but then after you ask here's the kick you got to believe that it can happen for you stop looking at the success of other people and not thinking that that same success can happen for you man i'm not saying that pacific way specific way i'm just saying that, that a success can happen for you just like it can happen for somebody else. Why do you think it keeps happening to other people over and over? Because they ask and they believe. Now, here's the cold part. Receive it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What you mean receive it? I asked for it. I believe in it. Why would I not want to receive it? Act like it. Act like it's already there. Behave as though you have it in your hands. Smile about it. Realize that, man, it's just days away. And how many other days that is? If it's days away, it's just days away. We don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, next week, in 30 days. We don't know if it's going to take a few years. But you got to receive it, though. You got to ask. You got to believe. And you got to receive it. You got to act as though it's that. Now, there's another part now to this about work. You know, don't please, faith without works is dead. Don't think you're going to just ask for something, believe in, and then go sit down and start watching TV. Come on now, let's get real. Let's not leave out the, the other jewel. You got to work. Hear what I want you to know about when you strike out on that mission. That the journey that you strike out on to accomplish a goal, the journey is a process. It's not an arrival date. It's a process. All you're looking to do, folks, is start the process. Get it started. Don't worry about the arrival date. Act like it's there. It, the arrival date is coming. But here is the beauty of the journey being a process. All along the way of your journey, you will find success. The whole time you're on the on the journey, the whole time you're in the process of finding your mission, fulfilling your mission, uncovering your dreams, reaching your goals, the beauty of it is all along the way, you're going to find success on so many levels. And people fail to look at that part. They keep thinking to themselves, man, I ain't there yet. I ain't, you know, it's like when you take a little kid on a long car trip and they're in the back seat. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Boy, if you just look out the window, see where we done been. Look out the window. Look at the mountains. Look at these trees. Look at the views we got. No, we ain't there yet. But Lord have mercy. Look at what he's showing us along the way. Stop getting mad because you ain't at the arrival date or your dreams ain't came true yet. Look up. Look up. You may not be where you want to be, but man, can't you thank God that you ain't where you was? How about that one? Huh? All right.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's here again. Another great day, another opportunity, another blessing from our Heavenly Father. Man, I'm so glad about it, man. Uh, Wow. (laughs) I am certainly happy about being a participant. I want everybody to join in and just be grateful, man. Just take a moment out and say thank you for this great day, for this opportunity. And no matter how it's going, uh, know this now, you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. I know it's a little tough for some people right now. I know there are people out there that's going through it, that's having a moment, that's dealing with a crisis. But can I tell you, this too shall pass. Keep your faith. Don't ever lose the faith. God is right there. Now, don't you turn away and then say God ain't here. No, no, no. Turn back around because he's always right there. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi, Monica Jr., and the legend of nephew Tommy Jr. Anything on your head today? I mean, Mm. right there. On on your your pop ting. I promise you that ain't what I (laughs) mean. That's what you did. No, you just Um, did. With everything I'm going through over here, you just go add on it, huh? (laughs) That's what you're going to do. What you going through? You're going Man, I ain't going to never get my point across in here. Never. <laughs> What's your point, Junior? Uh, no, I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell my wife something. Yes, that's, you know, I, and I tried to be forceful, but it didn't come out right because they started laughing. They didn't. <laughs> hey! Yeah, I told her. Said, Let me you know, I did. Say, that's what I said. Oh, wait, you just listen to me? Sound? Yeah. <laughs> and, Shut up. I, yeah, I said, I didn't say that, but I tried. I said, listen. If you just listen to me, please. And then she called her mom and everybody say, say it again. And then everybody on the phone. Now it's her sisters and two cousins I ain't never met. They all laughing because I don't sound like I'm I'm running nothing. I just, mm. and I ain't going to never mm. get my point across. Because I told her, I said, listen, if you just listen, please. And then he said, she said, hold on, listen to this. Say it again. Now everybody on the phone. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You know, it you was an uncle no on respect. there. No. Well, Junior, was that your base? Was that your that was I was at Max, Shirley. I was at Max. And I'm just saying, uh, is there a way around this? Yeah, it is, Junior. How? You're going to have to start emailing your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Bold caps. Bold caps. You know that, you know that little orange emoji? Uh, yeah. Where the whole face be fire, fire engine orange. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the little mad one. Put a lot of them on there. <laughs> yeah, because it ain't going to work with this. And then and then that little fire thing that look like a campfire. Throw that yeah. one on there. Let me see. Let me help <laughs> the you. The other one, and too, then, uh, Steve. The blue one where the man yelling, where it looks like he's yelling. I don't know that one. Then yeah. do the one with the clouds around your head. Look like your head finna explode. <laughs> <laughs> throw that one on there, Junior. Mm-hmm. I love it. And then throw them eyes. Like, what? You know, your eyes is bucking out. <laughs> throw that bunch of them on there. Okay. And then put that muscle, that dude where he got his arm up like that, oh. that muscle. Throw that one on there. <laughs> throw that one on Then that should get yeah. me. That should get me there. Well, you know, that at least make him read it. And go, oh, no, he didn't. All I got. You have got to stop verbally chastising her. <laughs> All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Let's run it back. Uh, this right here is no anchovies. No anchovies. Cat dog, if you would, let's get right on into it right there. No anchovies. Hello. Hey, man, who, 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 who is the person I need to talk to about? The, um, I got a pizza that's been messed up. Who do I need to talk to? Well, you can talk to me, sir. Well, what's going on? What happened to your pizza? Somebody put some f-ing anchovies on my pizza. Black people, uh, black people don't eat no f-ing anchovies, man. So, so uh, who... who 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 the f- would who would do that? Who would put anchovies on my damn pizza? I don't want to know. Settle down, settle down with the language there, pal. All right. You know, if you got anchovies on your pizza, you just must have gotten mixed up with another order. I'll send you another f- pizza. It ain't a big deal. But I ain't asking no f- anchovies, man. What, matter of fact, let me ask you something. What the f- is an anchovy any damn way? It's like a f- sardine. That's what a f- anchovy is, okay, pal? It's like a f- sardine. Hey, 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 let me tell you something, man. First of all, what's your name? What is your name? I'm Gino. I'm Gino. 
So you're the owner of the damn pizza place. Yeah, I own the damn pizza place. And I don't need people calling me and cursing at me because it was a mistake. You know, mistakes happen, pal. Worst things go on in this life. And then you're getting some anchovies on your pizza. Hey, man. Hey, okay. So here's the deal. I done had a bunch of guests come to my house or order pizza, and every last one of them got anchovies on them. You know what I'm saying? So I got an issue with it. I done spent over $50 with you with these pizzas, and the, and the shit made wrong. Nobody likes anchovies? No, I told you something. Folks, black people don't eat no anchovies, man. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 I'm almost certain I've served anchovy pizza to black people before. Okay, the black people that I know don't eat anchovies. Okay? okay, well, then we'll send you some pizzas without any anchovies on them. Hey, you know what? I don't, like your, I don't like your attitude. You know what, man? You don't mess well, around maybe if you didn't come at me here. with so much attitude to start with, you wouldn't get no attitude. Okay, okay, look at it. Don't get your ass whooped, okay? Don't get your ass whooped. What did you just... What, excuse said, me, don't... what did you just... Did you just threaten me? I said don't get your ass whooped. Do you no think you're trouble. talking... Who the f*** do you think you're talking to, f*** face? I, I, I'm talking to Gino, the owner That's of right. Pizzeria. You. That's right. That's right. You don't tell me you're going to kick my f***. Okay, pal. You know where the pizzeria is. You know, okay, so, you just so, calm so, the so, down. Do, do you, do you, want, okay, that's it. I'll tell you what, man. In the next three to five minutes, I'm going to walk down there and kick your little ass behind putting these the show we on here and having a little pompous attitude like you think you can't get your ass what? You come on down here, okay? And we'll see. Do me a favor. Go f yourself and the f***ing horse you rode in on, okay? And bring it on down here. All right, we'll take care of it there. Now, stop some anchovies up your f***ing all right, pal? Okay, 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 cool. All right, cool. Okay, you okay, know. okay. You like to say okay a lot, do you? Yeah. Is that one of your favorite you, words, okay? Yeah, you need to have somebody there with you when I get there, because I promise yeah. you, Gino finna get his ass up. Yeah, Gino's shaking in his f***ing boots, pal. Me and my anchovies, we're sitting here scared out of our minds right now. Okay, you okay, let me, me tell you. Dealt with clowns like you my whole life. Please. Okay. Let, let, let me tell you this here. Do you do you, do you know who you're talking to? I'm talking to some f***ing idiot who don't know how to talk. That's what I'm talking to. No, you're talking to nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Mr. Gino. You just got pranked. <laughs> you telling me I'm throwing f bombs all over the radio? <laughs> You dropping f bombs all over the radio, who, baby. Who, who, who I want to know who did this to me because they're getting some f bombs. You who got, did this to me? Do you, you have a guy that works for you? Uh, he says he works uh, five to close. Andre, you got a Andre? You got a Dre that works for you? Yeah, I got a Dre that works for me. And Dre's going to be spending some time in a walk-in freezer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is Black time people don't here. need anchovies, huh? <laughs> Black people don't need anchovies, baby. Hey. I got to ask you this, Mr. Gino. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Your show. <laughs> the baddest radio show in the land is the Steve Harvey Show. <laughs> With no Steve answer, Harvey Morning. Baby. No answer. Steve Harvey Morning Show. I mean, I'll be saying, I'm going to send you some pizzas. I'm sending that station dozens of pizzas with anch double anchovies on every one of them. <laughs> And there you have it. Stupid as all get out. That's nephew. No need for any pranks and praise up in here today. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm not going to ask for it. Y'all don't never it. give it to me when I ask for it. Nah, 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 you never want to give it to me. Nobody ever. You know, you're supposed to give people flowers. Well, what are you begging for now? Could we just go ahead on then? You're supposed to give people their flowers while they living. You know, give me my See, prank you praise. You don't want prank. praise. Now you want flowers. Mm. We're not doing oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> we not doing that. Here we go. Here we go. For you to always say you don't want prank praise. Now you uh, want flowers. You want flowers for being stupid. People get flowers for all different kinds of things. Just show me, you know, show me some love sometime, man. You don't you don't do nothing with me no more. We used to you know, we was younger, we used to fish what? together, man, we used to take me places, we used to do things, we used to we was really I off had up, to. Know. Is that what this uh, is about? Cause I had to. He wants bonding uh, time with you. I don't have Steve. to. No, bond, you got family. 
Used to ride me on his bicycle back in there. You know, we just we was we was tight, you know. The the bicycle or the basket? Which one was it? Uh, <laughs> he was in the basket, Junior. How oh, is bike. that possible? How is that possible? In the basket. <laughs> but Junior, I was in the basket with hair on. Nah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I had hair on my head when he was riding me around. I just right. you, know you ain't gonna jump in here. Then nobody yeah. said nothing to you. You ain't gonna just okay, jump I'll in here. You what, your five six. I ain't had no hair on, but I was on the bike. <laughs> oh, boy, please. Mm. Mm. Oh, everybody want my uncle, man. Good God. <laughs> what? Get get your uncle. Uncle. Boy, he is your uncle. Your, uh, I ain't no owl. I'll stop all that. Ooh. All right. Where your right, uh, uncles at? I know you got some uncles. You <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, nephew. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, revealed that she is cancer and she's undergoing treatment. Kanye West demands that he be called by his new legal name. That is Ye. Call him Ye. Mm. And three underage boys are nicknamed Lil Rascals after they robbed a Houston bank. That is all coming up at the top of the hour. Mm. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. <clears throat> This is from Tanya in DMV. Tanya says, my parents got divorced four years ago. Lately, he's been flirting with my mom and she gives him money. She thinks he wants her back. Should I tell her he's living with the woman and they use her money for the casino or should I mind my business? Hmm. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to go and tell your mama that. It's now, normally, I say stay out of it. Right. That's your but mama this is your mama. Yeah. This is your mama. And you got to quit thinking that this, that my uh, stepdaddy, whatever your daddy wants you back. Because he lived with another woman. They're taking your money going to the casino. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Tell your mom. <laughs> I'm telling it. I'm Tell kidding. your mama. <laughs> All right. Next is Onyx in Pensacola. Onyx says, I'm involved with a man that is an escort for an older lady. We've been together for a few weeks, and the sex is really good, but he just sprung this info on me. I'm sure if things were reversed, he wouldn't be with me. Is his job a deal breaker? Yes, a deal breaker. Why would you ask him? And yeah, his loving is good. He practiced all the time. <laughs> That's what he do. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, all the time. So, you know, I mean, you, you ain't got nothing. What do you mean he just sprung this on you? Mm -hmm. You know why he told you? Because he not finna stop. Because oh, so you not I finna am. get in the way of his mm -hmm. money. Right. Now, he just told it to you to see how you gonna handle it. Because this is what I'm doing. I done told you now. Mm. I got to go over here and take care of Miss Roberta. Now, I done told you. Mm. <laughs> I told you that. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, for, it should be a deal breaker, you're saying. His job should be a deal breaker for Onyx. Well, uh -huh. yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> come on. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving on to Nisha in Whittier. Nisha says, my roommate videotaped my boyfriend and I having sex in front of the fireplace. She said I violated house rules and she wanted proof. Now I'm worried that she might be some kind of weirdo. Does she do it for her pleasure or to prove a point? Oh, <laughs> what difference do it make if she a weirdo or she did it to prove a point? How did she get in there? <laughs> Y'all in front of the fireplace. Fireplace in the living room. Yeah. 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 So, so Y'all in the living room. Mm -hmm. Right. It's open. Living room mm -hmm. open. Yeah. She stayed Every, there. Yeah. It's Every her house, too. Yeah. Yeah. That roommate. She did. So, now, nah, I'm just, I mean, what's the problem? <laughs> Camera on. What, why is your question, is she a weirdo? <laughs> did she do it for her pleasure or to prove a yeah. point? Yeah. 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 Uh, what the point is made. You mm -hmm. this is y'all, so don't say it ain't, and this is y'all in front of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. These are now I thought rules. we said that we was gonna keep our private business in our bedroom. 
Why you out here in the living room? I just bought that rug in front of that fireplace. <laughs> so she had to press play to tell her that. You see, you see, no, 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 say it ain't you. <laughs> the rug, the rug so, ain't gonna be the same. I'm telling you that now. Yeah. So I think her question is wrong. Is she a weirdo or she did to well, prove a point? Uh-huh. Prove a point. What should her question have been? God, dog, she saw me. Mm-hmm. I thought she was gone. Right. She said she was at the store. I knocked on the door and wasn't nobody here. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. What dif- what difference do we don't care? But she does she, <laughs> well, she know she that was... she recorded her though? During she the time. know now. Yeah, she knows. Right. Now. She didn't know at the moment. <laughs> because right. the roommate because she her was I... busy. Yeah, she violated house rules. I, I want to see the did... tape. All she did was put the the phone right there. Why you always want to see somebody? Why? She needs proof. Why you don't want to see it? You don't want to see the tape? Because it ain't me. If it ain't me, what am I? What? I don't want to see me. I want to see the tape. No, no. You see, see, you got a little problem. You have a little problem. I think think you need to crush you. You you got a little problem. You you always want to watch somebody. Call that song. I don't know what it's called. It's called Boyer. Boyerism. It's a Boyer. Right there. I ain't down care. All right. Last one, Steve. Chastity in Monroe. Chastity says, my nine-year-old stepdaughter told my husband that she hates me. He told her that if she doesn't want to visit him because of me, that's fine. I believe that's poor parenting. And now I'm the reason he can't see his child. How do I fix this situation? CLO. Well, the husband seems like he's made. uh, He's chosen you over the child. See, plus, you got to understand, he fighting a double a double whammy. A big part of this child's uh, disdain for you is what the baby's mama done told her about you. Like, number one, you probably are being blamed as the reason why they ain't together as a family no more. Uh, See? Uh-huh. So you, you, he, and, and you're dealing with that. So how do I fix this? It's nothing you can do. Now, this situation is out and beyond your control. What can he do? He already know he fighting against his ex. When you go over there, know that this heifer is the reason me and your daddy ain't together. We'd have a family if it wasn't for her. That's so this is a nine-year-old girl. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wrong. That's so she done bad. bought that energy that's to so the house. Levels. All you can do is hang in there until later on when they grow up a little bit and they start understanding better how this go. Mm-hmm. She going to find out her mama crazy. You know, and she going <laughs> to see why daddy over there. It, it, always, it always happen. It always work out. <laughs> yeah. So it's just... nothing you did. You're not the reason why uh, he's not seeing his child. He's just not. It's not bad. It's bad parenting because they, the co-parenting isn't working out between mm-hmm. him, your your man, and his ex, who is the baby's mother. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Because the dad certainly told the daughter, if if you don't want to come over, you don't have to. That's fine. So he's sick Yeah, of you know, I, I'll pick you up sometime. We'll go somewhere. Right. You know, I still got visitation. I'll come give you, but I'm not going to make you come over here. Mm-hmm. And you don't like this woman because that's that puts that makes the woman uncomfortable. You be in here and you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Now, two women I care about is uncomfortable. All right. I'll come pick you up at your mama's house. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. On Friday, Kate Middleton, Catherine Princess of Wales, delivered a shocking message to announce that she is cancer. Kate stated that she had been hospitalized for almost two weeks at a private clinic in London after she had major abdominal surgery. And after the surgery, tests showed that cancer was present. Princess Kate stated that she is undergoing a course of preventative chemotherapy. Kensington Palace has not released details of what type of cancer Princess Kate has, nor what stage the cancer is in or her possible prognosis. Many of the stars who first mocked the princess about her appearance on a photoshopped picture are apologizing now because they didn't know all the details. So there you go. They jumped to conclusions with all these 
theories and all this stuff. And um, now here we are. You know, she's yeah. announced that she has cancer, so they're kind of backtracking mm-hmm. now, everyone. Prayers, yes. prayers, man. Mm-hmm. Prayers, yeah. Prayers, so prayers. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Her yeah. children are so young. <clears throat> yeah. They're so young, so... Mm-hmm. She, they've got to deal with that. And then the king, he has yeah. cancer. It's a lot going yeah. on at the palace. Yeah. And he said that they've been corresponding with each mm-hmm. other. The king did. There is hope. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Mm-hmm. There yeah, is there hope. There you go, man. Tommy. Survivor. Come yeah. on, man. Start yeah. fighting right now. Mm-hmm. Start mentally fighting. Yeah. Good message. And in, in lighter news, as we move on, according to TMZ, Uh, Kanye West would like for the music industry to respect his new legal name, and it is Ye. It is Ye, Y-E, Ye. According to Kanye's chief of staff, he considers his birth name, Kanye West, to be a slave name, so he ditched it. He said, quote, Ye is a black man in America who wants the right to to full self-determination, just like everyone else. Kanye demands that big names in the music industry like publishers, streamers, and sites that post his song lyrics, among others, refer to him as Ye moving forward. So no more You Kanye got your Steve. nerves. After all Just them slavery it. clothes your ass made and had them people in there wearing them slave clothes. <laughs> and and you got nerves to talk about that. What? what? <laughs> it's, it's Whole slavery. video with all these slaves in it. Y'all seen that. Y'all ain't forgot that. Burlap uh-huh. and everything everywhere that boy had them people wearing that stuff. <laughs> Now nah, you got to be called Yay. Yeah. Yay, yeah, I will yeah. not. Yay, yeah, I will not. <laughs> well, he said but Kanye then, is Carla, a slave name. Carla said, <laughs> yeah. you know, he wasn't he the one that said slavery was an option? Yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember did. that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so can can he tell his wife to put some clothes on? Because I'm so tired of seeing her <laughs> walking Where around. are these pictures at? Who are y'all talking about? The last time I seen How her, she had on that can- outfit where you- head to toe was black sweater. Oh, How no. can you miss oh, no. her? How well, can you miss her? Now. That's my question. How have Everything you not seen her? I don't see. Her. I don't see. I don't <laughs> see. Well, well, hold on. I pull on. up next She was at a fashion now. show with just sheer, sheer, sheer. hose on. You could oh, see no. everything. Sheer oh, hose. Nothing. You could see everything. Just walking down the street. <laughs> what in the world? What in the world? <laughs> 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 it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> she went out with um, Norris uh, the other day, and she had in a big fur jacket, so people thought she had changed. But then the very next day, she and Ye went to movies, and she had on uh, like a bathing suit top, you know. And her I'm her back. big thing is yeah, <laughs> everything. Just her her butt is always out. Always, girl. Uh, you'll never Always. see a picture without her butt with her butt I've never covered seen up. Any of this. <laughs> it's all her cheeks uh, are always out for the world always. to see. Yeah, so I'm gonna get that for you. you. You just stand by. I got it for you. Don't you worry about <laughs> it. You're gonna you see it today. It. You're gonna see it today. <laughs> Send it to me, T. I ain't never seen it either. You haven't seen it either, no, I ain't Junior. Never seen her. What? It's all over the internet. Mm-mm. Yeah. But the fact your name is Yay, so you just start off scriptures now? That's what you is? Yay the <laughs> through the valley of death. <laughs> That's who you is now? <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. Go All right. right I want you to see him, Steve, so you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Oh, Tom, and, he's sending them now while we're on the air. Uh-huh. Uh, while yeah. we're on the air, he's sending oh. them. <laughs> it's moving on. I'm tired of her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> I feel like I really know her because I've seen her naked. (laughs) Moving on. uh, We're going to move on to this last story um, and and just ask a simple question to start off. What's going on with our youth? According to FBI officials in Houston, three minor, minor boys robbed a Wells Fargo bank in North Houston on March 14th. There was an 11 year old, a 12 year old and a 16 year old. They were all bank robbers. They call them the little rascals. Witnesses reported that the three boys entered the Wells Fargo bank and handed a threatening note to a bank teller. Then all three ran from the bank with an undisclosed amount of money. Each of the little rascals was charged with robbery by threat and they are being held in juvenile detention. (sighs) So much for good planning. (laughs) <laughs> they need just but stupid, whoop man. <laughs> just stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ran out. Ain't yeah. no getaway car. Yeah. <laughs> Never. And you know what? I've been trying to follow the story a little bit. It seems like the 
I guess the investigators are trying to see that an adult put them up to it. Yeah, they was they trying to get, find out. Yeah, yeah, Aww. less time being mm-hmm. children than if an adult actually committed the crime. And the boy's grandmother was saying that they didn't have a gun and that the teller gave them play money. I don't know where my mom getting that from. But yeah, but but okay, <laughs> here's know. here's okay. Let's say an adult put them up. How stupid is this person? Yes. Yes. You don't think that when they catch them kids that mm-hmm. they not going to tell? Yeah. Come They're going to talk right. immediately. Yeah. 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 It, it just, it's just no sense in this. Yeah. 11, 12. Yeah. You're ruining yeah. these babies' lives. Like All right. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, Trump's bond in a civil case was reduced to $175 million. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. On Monday, a New York appeals court reduced Donald Trump's bond from the original $464 million to down to, I should say, $175 million. This is in a civil fraud case. Trump was also given an additional 10 days to pay the bond. The ruling is another victory for Trump, whose lawyer stated that for Trump, coming up with the larger bond was practically impossible. As he left the courtroom, Trump said, I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division, and I'll post the $175 million in cash, bond, security, or whatever is necessary very quickly within the 10 days. So, Steve, were you surprised by all of this? Were you surprised? No, they're going to make everything convenient for him. Now, but it's still a lot is, of money, is, though. Well, is the bond the same as a criminal bond? So, like, if it's if it's $500 million, then is it 10% $50 million? Is it, oh, because that's what a bond is, you know, mm-hmm. you bond out. Mm-hmm. So, if it's $175 million, it's $17 million.5. You got that ten mm-hmm. percent. I'm just I'm I'm curious if that's the same type of bond as when you bond out of jail. Wow, okay. I, I, I don't I, I I don't know the answer to that. Well, that's yeah, because that's different. What's coming mind up. blowing but, but, is that we're having a rematch too, Steve, of this election of 2020. I, I, I just is, can't even. I I, I, I don't I'm even understand this. <laughs> I'm sickened by this. Yeah, that this yeah. country. Is that mentally poisoned by this man? Mm -hmm. That this Republican Party is so afraid of this man Mm -hmm. that there are 70 million people in this country who are just like this man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, The real danger for me is, and the real thing is, the 70 million people that voted for him will vote yes. for him yeah. again. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a yeah. rematch. This is unbelievable. That's but they, what we live. But, but, but they live amongst us. They stay yes. next door. Yeah. They're going to have yeah. the Trump signs back up. Mm-hmm. But they're and disillusioned just, because they think it's going to be some kind of you know, this great America and all of this when he does get in office, but it's not going to be like that. Trump is for Trump. Well, they're <laughs> racist not... and they're bigoted. Yeah. <laughs> because of all of his policies. But what the regular person doesn't know, and I'm here to tell you, he is not for you. So mm-hmm. all of these common people, if you're not rich, Trump don't care nothing about you. Hmm. And Trump don't care about them. Trump cares about Trump. Trump yeah. wants to be president so he can avoid these indictments. This is all a lie, and it gives up them country, podunk thinking ass folks that think he bought them. And then it appeases to the ones that's got money who ain't never right. liked us no damn way. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, uh, we'll switch gears and play a round of One Has to Go right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for a round of One Has to Go. All right, dental floss, toilet tissue, razor, one has to go. I tell you one need to stay. That toilet tissue got to stay. <laughs> oh, you got to have that toilet tissue. <laughs> that toilet tissue. I don't care about the yeah. uh, toss up between dental floss and razor. But uh, I need that razor, though. I got yeah. to have that razor. I don't really need this dental floss, but that razor, yeah. Got yeah. Your teeth? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, give me the straw out that broom. We're going to have to make it do what it do. <laughs> That's so old school. <laughs> Y'all would rather shave than floss? Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. What? I, do you know what we finna look like? Well, Junior don't know, but do you know what we finna look like if we don't, if oh, we don't shave? Know. <laughs> I do know. I do know. 
<laughs> a while shave. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one has to go. Oh, 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 now we on to something interesting. What? Okay. What, what? what? Don't start, S- Steve. Well, Don't he start. said that while he shaved. Oh, oh my God! See? So how far back? <laughs> Is you shaving? <laughs> All right, one has to go. So why you stop, though? That's what I'm <laughs> one has to go. You riding a bus, a horse, or a camel? Which one? One has to go. Ride a bus, ride a horse, ride a camel. <laughs> I'm not riding a camel. I can't ride a camel. I ain't riding a camel. I don't know nothing about no camel. <laughs> nothing about a camel. At all. I ain't never seen one. No. Steve does. Yeah, but yeah, if I didn't roll bus, though, a whole lot done went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, it fell off. You falling yeah. off. <laughs> That ain't no damn Steve Harvey up there. Man, leave that man alone. That is Steve. Let me go get a selfie. Steve, Steve, you're sitting back there Steve. by yourself. Get your ass away from me. Uh, let me get now a selfie. I'm on, I'm, now I'm on the bus with attitude. Uh, man and Travis. Stop. Come on off, Steve. Uh, <laughs> man and Travis. Uh, All right, one has to go on your pizza. One has to go onions, mushrooms, peppers. Hmm. I got to have them, 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 uh, I got to have a mushroom. I like mushrooms. You, you, you know what, Tommy? You guys have everything. Now. I don't you need mushrooms. I got to have caviar. Remember? Get rid of the pepper. <laughs> yeah, I got to have Yeah, I remember when he said that? I got to have Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't yeah, live without nice it. And have nice yeah, he couldn't live having. without it. Right, without caviar. He did say that, Shirley. Uh-huh, he couldn't out live out without it. Good. <laughs> a whole lot of things. Answer the question. <laughs> All right, I onions, mean, mushroom, peppers. peppers. You can take them peppers on off there. Yeah, I don't need yeah. peppers. Yeah, I yeah peppers. Okay. All right, this is sex. One has to go. Sex on a plane, sex at the movies, sex at work. One has to go. Oh, on that plane. Hell, I ain't got no plane. Yeah, on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Well, you fly commercial. People do it at commercial all the time. No. Nah. <laughs> no. I'm just up here. Am I going to have sex at the movie for? <laughs> you it's ain't never done dark, that? Eve. It's dark in there. Yeah, people do it all the time. You ain't done that? You've never had <laughs> oh, sex the, at the movie? You really ain't live yet. <laughs> what? what? Everybody can't move around in the last seats like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have to go to the ones that the seats let out. You know, they recline. You have to go to that kind of See, I, first of all, why are you in public? Why are y'all in, at this movie theater? <laughs> they turned on. They, yeah. they went to see a movie. What you talking yeah. about? They went to see you a movie. You know how many people in there? <laughs> you don't think nobody going to see you. Nobody going to hear you at this movie. Well, you got to, <laughs> it, 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 you got to go why to a movie. Why ain't nobody, huh? You got to go to an action-packed movie. It's a lot of sound and a lot of, uh-huh. you know, it's a lot of activity going on. Oh, you sound know, effects. The drum. Yeah, yeah you can't be in over. <laughs> ooh, ooh, they blowing up stuff. This making me hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know they ain't pull that gun off in the shoot them. Oh, let me get you some. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, look at that car flipping over, catching on fire. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> A nice action movie. <laughs> All right. That's today's round of One Has to Go. Coming up next, the nephew and the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. Today, And the subject is, the visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> all right. What? That's, all right, what, we'll find what, what, out what, what that's all about in just a few. <laughs> right now, the nephew is here. You hear him with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what you got? Uh, this one's pretty serious right here. Most of my oh. pranks are very serious. Y'all know that they are very serious. <laughs> no, they're not, no. boy. They're not. Serious? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't serious. say that. This, this one's real, 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 real serious right here. Um, <laughs> this right here is your wife's birthday gift. All right, your wife's birthday gift. Cat dog, if you would, we got to get. I got to get her something. I got to. Whew. 
Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Dare. Yeah, what's up? Hey, Dare, man, what's going on, bro? This, uh, uh, my name is Chris, man. I work with, um, I work with your wife, Sharon. I think I, I think I may have seen you at one of the, um, one of the gatherings before, man, like a, a happy hour we had after work or something. I, I don't know if you remember me or not. No, nah, I don't remember you. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Hey, listen, man, I know Sharon's birthday is coming up. So I wanted to, uh, if you didn't mind, I, I hope you don't mind me calling. I wanted to reach out and see if you were, uh, you know, what you were getting her for a birthday. I, we, I wanted to make sure, you know, we were going to pitch in and get her some at the job. We want to make sure, you know, we didn't get... You know, you know what you may be uh, gonna get her. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like something like a grab bag or some <laughs> like that. Uh, no, I wasn't gonna hit her with no grab bag. I was just, you know, like I said, we was gonna get some. We know we haven't really put our put our uh, uh, all the thoughts to it or what we was gonna get yet. But I want I personally want to see what you was getting. That way we don't, uh, you know, do. Okay. Well, she likes money, man. You can, you know, uh, give us some. Give her some cash or, you know, Starbucks card or uh, something for McDonald's. Something, you know, it, it don't have to be too big. She she, she don't, uh, you don't have to, you know, she she's not that materialistic. Okay, okay. Well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me ask you this, though, D. Uh, do you uh, know what her size is? Do I know what her size is? Yeah, like clothing, you know. Do you know what size she wear? Uh, yeah, I know what size. She's my she's my wife, man. I think this is kind of like get, I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable with this, man. What, well, well, where, I, I, do you do you think you know? I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, bro. Let me ask you this here: Do you, do you think she she like uh? Do she like stuff from Victoria's Secret? Whoa, hold up, man! Stop right there. What the f are you talking about? Well, no, I, I like I say, I, I want to what, what, what's your hey? What's your name again, man? My name's Chris. Like, like I said earlier, my name is Chris. Uh, how long how long you been with the company? Uh, I've only been there six months. You know, but like I said, I think I saw you at, at one of the happy hours. I, I saw, maybe you just don't remember who I am, though. No, 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 man. But you way out of line talking this shit about her size. And I, I'm not comfortable with this at all, man. You know? Okay, okay. Right, you, right. Way out, you way out of line. Right, but what she what what you didn't answer my question was was do you think she liked Victoria's Secret? That's I what I'm ain't asking. gonna answer your <laughs> question. What the fuck you talking about? Hey, okay, okay. What's 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 what with the language, brother? What's what's wrong? We brothers, you know. I, we ain't we ain't we ain't no <laughs> brother. You a <laughs> fool. Okay, what do you so get off asking me about my wife's clothes? And oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Okay, all right. I okay, understand you okay, want to talk with her tonight. Okay, what? Okay, what? Uh, all I'm saying is, 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 do you think she gonna like the Victoria's Secret? I'm I don't give a. a hey, man, shut the up with that. Do you know how long we've been together? I know this woman since high school. Don't come to me with that. Okay. So, so I was just trying to get a. a what? 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 What time do you guys get off? I'm coming down. Uh, I, 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 lead down. A, I, lead, I lead the office at 5.30, but I was going to leave early. I'll be right. I, hey, we can talk about this face-to-face. -face. Hey, hey, listen. I'm trying to get... Listen what? I ain't, ain't got to listen to shit. I'm trying to get Sharon a panty and bra set, man. Okay? Hey, you ain't buying my wife shit, And she wouldn't even accept it anyway. Okay. Hey, so, man, so, how, how, how you get this number? How you get this number? <laughs> I know she didn't give you this. <laughs> Let me tell you how, there. I got it from your wife, Sharon, because guess who I am? I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Sharon got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, there, there, this is Tommy, some, man. This is nephew Tommy, brother. Man, this is some bullshit. <laughs> This is some real, this is some straight up bullshit. Hey, man, you ain't white, man. You know, you need to stop with people, you know, because you might get, you might, somebody might be waiting for you after work one day, man. That's totally wrong. You ever heard of karma? I heard of karma. Somebody going to play a prank on your ass one day. Your uncle is right. Somebody's going to whoop your ass. It's just a matter of time. Oh, <laughs>
Oh, man. All right, all right, Darren. Before I get my ass whooped, will you t- please tell the people, what is the baddest radio show in the land? The <laughs> Steve Harvey Show. <laughs> I got to get her something. I don't know what she like. You know, I'm trying to... Nice big trip, big tour secret, you know, something nice, you know, just something. <laughs> you don't want to go mm-hmm. cheap. You want to get us something mm-hmm. nice. So. I, you know, <laughs> no, I, yeah, you, know. Know. you really was courteous, though. You know, at least I'm calling and asking. I could have just brought it. And just, I'm trying to be respectful, <laughs> Junior. I'm trying to be <laughs> right. respectful. Let me know what you know, what you think yeah. your wife might like, man. I'm not trying to get all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I'm know. Be, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't want him to get the same thing I get. Yeah. You know, let me right, let's, let's, right. let's work this thing out. We let's get we, creative. We, yeah. yeah, we both trying to make sure she's straight. You understand? She's happy. Uh-huh. That that and it, and at the end of the day, that's all that should matter mm-hmm. is that she's happy. Yeah. That's all. That's all that matters, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the nerve of some people, man. When you try to do something for somebody, to... <laughs> and they don't appreciate. <laughs> they don't appreciate. You don't want, you don't want to appreciate what I'm doing over here. I'm trying to get your wife something. Yeah. Come on, man. Let me get your wife something. Let's let's go on and agree that uh-huh. we both are here for a good worthy cause, and that's all about making her happy. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got a worthy cause Saturday night. It's going down. I done said it a hundred times, a million times. It will be in the Gump. That is Montgomery. Alabama at the Montgomery Performing Arts Center. It is myself, celebrity, the comedian J.J. Williamson, and the one and only Earthquake shaking it up. It is this Saturday night, Montgomery, Alabama. Tickets are on sale right now. Headed to the gum, baby. All right, laying in the cup. Y'all already know it's the April Fool's Comedy Jam in Brooklyn, Brooklyn in the house. That's right, baby, at the Barclays Center. And it is star-studded. It is locked and loaded. Oh God, the list goes on and on and on. We got third. We going. We going thirteen deep. You heard me. You heard me, baby. We going mm-hmm. thirteen deep up in there. So, uh, 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 if, if you don't leave laughing, something is definitely wrong. Okay. So I can guarantee you, rest assured you, you're gonna have a good time because you got a. Uh, Oh God! First, first and foremost, you got nephew Tommy. I mean, what? I mean, what more could you possibly ask? What more could you want out of that? And it is, when will we see nephew Tommy? <laughs> <Is that question? laughs> I'm probably gonna be right smack dab in the middle of that 13. Uh, right smack dab in the middle. Hosted by Rip Michaels, we got Bruce Bruce, my boy, in the building. Dio Hughley in the building. Just hilarious. Coco Brown. Tory Hart, Lonnie Love, oh my God, DJ Envy is rocking, uh, London Brown, okay, uh, uh, man, the list goes on, Brian, Brian Hooks, Shante Wayans, Tracy Morgan in the building, it goes on and on and on and on and on, and the, the funny don't stop. It'll break it down. Brooklyn in the house. Tickets on sale right now. Barclays Center, baby, yay, yay, New York City. <sighs> okay. I was gonna say take that, take that, but that ain't a good. It ain't a good time uh-uh. to say take that. No, wow. I wasn't gonna Not take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Yeah. Take that back. Take that back. Take that back. I'm sorry. You're All right. Slow. Coming up next, thank you, nephew. Strawberry letter subject: The visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, the visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. Dear Stephen Shirley, I live in North Carolina and I'm in a long distance relationship with a man I've known all my life. He's a great man that would never cheat on me because he barely has enough money to take care of the two of us. After dating him for seven years without him having a real plan for our future, I cheated on him. I got a sugar daddy that lives in the same city as my man. He is a preacher and and he's 31 years older than me. He spoils me with gifts and he knows exactly what he is doing in the bedroom. 
but I have a potential problem coming up Easter weekend, and I don't know what I should do. My boyfriend is spending Easter Sunday in North Carolina with me and my mom. My sugar daddy is going to be our visiting pastor at my home church for Easter Sunday. He has no idea that I have a boyfriend. He said it's a no-no. So he called me today and said he's planning to stay at my apartment because it's just one night. He also said he wants to cook for me. I suggested we get a hotel suite and order room service. He said even though he's divorced, he wants to be discreet, so he'd rather stay at my place. I truly need him to get a hotel room because my boyfriend is staying with me. I can't afford to mess things up with my sugar daddy because he's talking about buying me a new car. My mom said I'm 30 now, so I should focus on the man with money, not the broke one. Dumping my boyfriend on Easter would be too harsh. I need advice. How do I decide who I'm spending Easter with? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Are you for real? So you need Steve and I to help you navigate between these two guys, the best way to cheat. Uh, but it seems to me like you, you're doing pretty good on your own. I mean, both these guys live in the same city, you say. They don't live in your town. Your boyfriend of seven years, though, he can't even afford a hotel room. Um, how are they just telling you where they're going to stay? Your, your mother must be right that, that your boyfriend of seven years is broke or just really, really cheap. And not only that, he sounds married or something like he has another woman where he lives. Because after seven years, you would think there would be some sort of movement toward future plans for you guys. But no, no, he's just, you know, just tr- come moving along with seven years. Uh, and, and neither one of these men should, should be trying to stay at your house anyway. Let them get their own rooms whenever they come to see you. Tell Mr. Long Distance Lover that your plans have changed and he can't come for Easter at all. That's what you tell him. Tell him that. Visiting pastor can't stay with you. And why should you be all stressed out and inconvenienced? He, he can get a hotel room. I'm sure he does that when he visits other churches in other cities. That's what he does. He'll understand. Uh, Yeah, you're right. This is a no-no. He said this is a no-no, meaning you can't see anyone else. Who is he to tell you who to see? (laughs) Get your life together. Listen to your mom. He'll understand. Everybody will be, uh, everybody will understand. This is crazy. We can't help you with this. Steve? Uh, Shirley, did we read the same letter? Uh Uh-huh. I'm factually off base here then. What? I, 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 I don't understand. What? Um, I, what, Steve? Okay, here we go. Listen, <laughs> the visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. Now, you're in a long distance relationship with this guy that you've known all your life. He's a great man who would never cheat on me because he barely has enough money to take care of the two of us. How you know? Hmm. <laughs> I just have a question for you. How do you know that? It's long distance. Y'all been together seven years. He barely got enough money. That's why he wouldn't cheat. Uh, Money has nothing to do with a man cheating. You just need to understand that right now. So I don't know where you got that little stupid notion from. After dating him for seven years without having a real plan for our future, I, the letter, the, the lady that wrote the letter, I cheated on him. I got a sugar daddy that lives in the same city as my man. So now that's two men that live out of state, out of the city. He is a preacher and he's 31 years older than me. Now I found out later on in the letter that your mama told you, you 30 now, so you need to focus on the money instead of the broke man, which means the sugar daddy pastor is 61. 61, Mm -hmm. you 30. We got that math together? Mm Mm-hmm. He spoils me with gifts. He knows exactly what he's doing in the bedroom. He's 61. Damn, if you ain't picked up nothing by 60. <laughs> if he not good in the bedroom by 60, he not fitting to get good. Right it ain't going. It's not going to happen. So uh, ain't nobody surprised about this. But I have a potential problem coming up Easter weekend, and I don't know what I should do. My boyfriend is spending Easter weekend in North Carolina with me and my mom, okay? And you want him to, because that's who you feel secure with, and you've already made these plans. My sugar daddy 
is going to be our visiting pastor at my home church for Easter Sunday. He has no idea that I have a boyfriend. How? Where does old ass dude come from? Meet you and expect you not to have no history. And then he say that's a no-no. Shirley want to know how can he tell you what to do? Because he paying for stuff, Shirley. That's how. That's exactly how. He, t- he paying he for stuff. It. No, well, he said it and he meant it because he paying. Now he got her tripping because if he were, if the money wasn't counting. Hey, hang on, Steve. Uh, hang on. We'll have part two of your response coming up to the strawberry letter. The subject is the visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. That's all coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is the visiting pastor is my sugar daddy. Uh, we got a tricky woman that done wrote a letter, got this boyfriend long distance she's known all her life, been dating him for seven years. He's made no plans for the future, and he's broke. He don't have enough money to take care of the two of them, so she assumes that he's in this long distance relationship not cheating because he don't have the money for two of us. I stated, and we'll state again, cheating has nothing to do with how much money he got. The reason y'all might not have enough money is because he split that money around town. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He doing something. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you decided, now you think you're going to beat him to the punch, so I cheated on him. I got me a sugar daddy. And the sugar daddy is 31 years older than you, and he spoils you with gifts and everything. And uh, he knows exactly what he's doing in the bedroom. Well, hell, he's 61. He's 61 because he's 31 years older than you, and you 30. He's 61. He's supposed to know what he's doing by now. 60 years of practice. So what? Y'all would kill me with this. He know what he's doing in the bedroom. Eh, he's 60. <laughs> Did you now, say I'm going to tell you right now. Years of practice. Yeah, not, yeah. 60. <laughs> 60 years. He supposed to know something. Mm-hmm. He done picked up a move or two. So what? What you need to be thinking about <laughs> is how many, how many more performances he got. <laughs> That's what you need to start looking at. It's almost time for the curtain call. <laughs> yeah, you know, you may say start slowing down. <laughs> now, here's the problem I have. On Easter weekend, I don't know what I should do. My boyfriend is spending Easter Sunday in North Carolina with me and my mom. Your mom is looking forward to it. You looking forward to it because he's safe. But now your sugar daddy is going to be our visiting pastor at the home church on Easter Sunday. And he has no idea that I have a boyfriend. Well, he should. I don't know how he think he met you and you was just dangling out there free. But he should. And he say that's a no-no. And he has every right to say that's a no-no because he paying. He paying. So he called me today and said he's planning on staying at my apartment because it's just one night. He also said he wants to cook for me. I suggested we get a hotel suite and order room service. He said even though he's divorced, he wants to be discreet. So he'd rather stay at my place instead of y'all trouncing through that hotel lobby and somebody see y'all. I truly need him to get a hotel room because my boyfriend is staying with me. Now... That's because y'all been together seven years. He, it'll be, If you ask him to get a hotel room, he ain't going to understand that the gig is up. But now I truly need him to get a hotel room. She talking about sugar daddy. Because my boyfriend is staying with me, and I can't afford to mess things up with my sugar daddy because he's talking about buying me a new car. Hmm. Oh, you got to be in that clowning, girl. <laughs> Anytime they talking about buying you a car, you got to be in there doing multiple monkey flips per evening. Per evening. Army what? crawling towards the bed. <laughs> Army crawling. On her elbows. Yeah. <laughs> Diving off dough knobs. You just in there. <laughs> you in there just clowning. Leaning over the couch, picking up the remote, talking about you see it yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you in there playing. My mom said I'm 30 now, so I should focus on the man with money and not the broke one. Dumping my boyfriend on Easter would be too harsh. Wait a minute, where all these morals come from? 
You know, y'all mm. kill me doing all this immoral stuff. Then huh? dumping him on East will be too harsh. <laughs> well, you got to get rid of him now. Easter is this Sunday. Yeah. I need advice. How do I decide who I'm spending Easter with? Lady, <laughs> you have a bigger problem than who you spending Easter with. You need to decide who you going to be with. You can't be with both these men. It ain't working. You too stupid to be with two men. Oh, wow. No, you don't even have the basics of cheating down, Pat. She can't lie well. She doesn't no, lie. No, you should tell Sugar Daddy you don't have men at your house. Mm-hmm. You know, unless we go into the next level, I, I don't have men at my house. And that would force him to get a hotel. But then... How you gonna go over there to the hotel? Cause your boyfriend gonna be at your apartment. You see, you have a quandary. Cause you got to get over to this hotel. Cause there's a new car riding on the line. <laughs> so you got to Dang get way. to that hotel. Now this man done already said he wanted to stay at your apartment cause he want to cook for you. Mm. So then he trying to do some other stuff and he's divorced, obviously. You think he's divorced or he should be divorced Mm. and he could potentially not be divorced because he's scared to get that hotel room. Mm -hmm. So now you got a whole bunch of liars in a relationship. Sugar daddy, broke boy, and stupid girl. (laughs) <laughs> that's the so new title then, of the letter uh, yeah see we have a how do you decide you need to decide who you're going to be with your mama's right mm-hmm. you're 30 you need to get your focus on now what you going to do because I can't tell you how to do this here because you done already messed All right, up leave your comments on you today's strawberry letter options. on Instagram <laughs> at Steve Harvey FM <laughs> and check us out ahead. On the Strawberry Letter Podcast on the free iHeartRadio app, where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Junior is here with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? You know what, Shirley? 80% people talk about my bracket still intact. No, it's not. If you saw this, no, it's not. 86% of the brackets are already busted. (laughs) <laughs> 80, 80, and you gonna sit up here and tell me your bracket's still intact? You mm. got to be kidding me! The brackets on your car may be, but not your bracket on this tournament. Nobody's bracket <laughs> is March intact Madness. right there. This March Madness is crazy. I'm, I'm telling you right there, if your mascot walk on four legs, they at home. I don't care oh. who your team is. <laughs> they, if you if you a tiger, if you a wildcat, if you a, a gator. If you a Longhorn, yo, yo, Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo, it don't matter. Your your team is at home, man. Did you see this? Uh, did anybody ever imagine a tournament without a Kansas in it? Whoa, no, no Kansas, no Kentucky. Hell yeah, man. I without Kansas, no Florida. What? No oh, Florida. Upset after upset. They buddy. number two. They was two seed. Baylor gone. The Aggies is gone. Hey, hey. What, hey. what, Tommy? Was you upset? It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Man, but it was a, well, it was we a can't good game. Tell. <laughs> we can't tell. We can't see you. <laughs> we can't. Dog, dog, dog. I don't even know why you on Zoom. <laughs> we can't tell because we can't see. Uh, I, I, I got to give it to you, Tommy. The, I didn't know Texas A&M was going to bring it like that, man. That was a good overtime they game. Fought hard. I didn't know either. Hey, yeah, <laughs> it was it was it was a good game, man. Because to erase a deficit like that, man, with the game they had, I thought it had it locked up, and mm. to hit a last second shot like that in a moment like that to go to the Sweet Sixteen, got to no, get they it lost. They ain't going no Sweet Sixteen. And I said to try to go to the Sweet Sixteen to tie the game up and go into overtime, but University of Houston pulled it off. You can't be mad. You're balling, man. You're yeah. balling. Yeah. They balling. I think U of H can win it, huh? Boy, they might can. It's so crazy. It's college basketball, but y'all better be looking at that San Diego boys because I think they trying to go back. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they balled San out. San Diego too, look like they trying. And is Creighton still in it? Creighton still in it, huh? Because I'm telling you right now, boy, they got some hood boys and they ain't doing nothing but jumping. <laughs> <laughs> they just in that jumping. <laughs> Who you feel like your favorite right now is, huh? 
I don't know. It looked like to me. It looked like them boys from San Diego. Mm-hmm. They look strong, but I like Creighton as a Cinderella team. UConn is number one. Duke going. <laughs> Duke get it. Duke they playing University of Houston on they Friday. Playing U of H. Yeah, they man. They're gonna play U of H. Well, that could be the end of that. We're going to see. <laughs> but sorry, Agnes. Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, Steve, a woman on social media needs your help. She says, I want my coworker to ask me out. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is from Passion in Albany. Passion says, I've been in an open marriage for two years. My husband agreed to stay with me after he caught me cheating, but he said he should be allowed to do what he wants to do, too. The thing is, I never disrespected him or called him out of his name when I was cheating. He found out I was cheating when he read my text messages, and I quickly told him the truth. Lately, he's been calling me someone else's name when we have sex. When I yelled at him about it, he asked, isn't this what you wanted? Is he being careless on purpose? What difference do it make? <laughs> if he being careless, he can say what he want to say now. Mm-hmm. You just said you in an open marriage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He can call you what For he want to call you. Two years. You don't call me nobody else's name. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't want to. Didn't you want somebody else in our marriage? Mm-hmm. Ain't that what you went and did? Mm-hmm. And now we got open marriage. See, y'all kill me with all these ignorant ways of trying to change the regular way things been done. Now you coming here with these new ways. Now all of a sudden you want to some rules to it. Ain't no rules to this foolishness. You in an open marriage. He call you Keisha if he want to. <laughs> but what's her name, though? It's not Keisha. Probably Diane or something. Diane. It ain't cool. <laughs> <laughs> Does he call you whatever he want to? Ain't this what you wanted? You wanted some other people in our marriage. Now here you go. Yeah, what qualifies as cheating in an open marriage? Girl. No, see, <laughs> you can't. Y'all stop, understand. man. I can, I'm so sick of this world we in today. Y'all don't want a traditional marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these young girls out here now talking about all these young girls want to have babies before they marriage don't care nothing about no husband when when you gonna need all of that eventually well the baby or you gonna want it because yeah. because now your baby where my daddy who mm-hmm. where you see all this him y'all y'all ain't thinking this thing out man the old-fashioned stuff still work you coming in with this new stuff man that ain't got no morals connected to it. Now nah, you want to be discussing the morality of it. Mm-hmm. Ain't no morality in an open man. He can call you what he want to. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, Keisha. Open right. marriage. He didn't come home last night. It's open. <laughs> Wide open. <laughs> Wide open. <laughs> Should have been closed. Uh-huh. The, the, whole, whole, yeah. the whole time. <laughs> Mm. And your stupid behind, as soon as he read the text, I admitted it right away. Oh, 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 oh what you want, points? I keep telling y'all about that honest. Told him <laughs> the truth. <laughs> Ooh, that's All right, mess. we have time for another one, Steve. This is from Chuck in Myrtle Beach. Chuck says, I was at my girlfriend's house trying to get warm and cozy in her bed, and I felt something around my feet. It was an old wife beater balled up at the foot of the bed under the sheets. She said, it's my shirt, and she was sleeping in it. She said, I ripped it off of her last last week while we were having sex. I didn't recall. I don't recall this, and uh, I can't even tell if it's my shirt. Is she trying to brainwash me to believe her? <laughs> oh, Chuck. Well, dog, gaslighting. This is simple, dog. This is real simple. What, what is it? What is it? Number one, do you wear white beads? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Check. Number uh-huh. two, uh-huh. you held it up, but you can't tell if it's yours. Mm. Yeah. So true. the tan it off could have been true. The fact that you don't remember tan it off is uh-huh. where we got a question. Chuck, do you drink? <laughs> what? A whole lot connected to this chuck. Oh my goodness. And if it was last week, mm-hmm. why 
is them sheets still <laughs> on your damn More importantly. Bed. Nasty. <laughs> and if it was another man in there, she ain't decent enough to change the seats when you come on. Uh, All right. Chuck, Chuck. Coming Chuck, up. Chuck. <laughs> at 20 minutes after the hour. Whoa, more Chuck. Of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. We, we want to acknowledge Kia Rusav in New Orleans. Uh, Kia is a school bus driver in New Orleans that saved eight children from a burning school bus. Okay, this is according to WWL in New Orleans. Kia noticed smoke and realized her bus was losing power, so she calmly evacuated eight children, kindergarten through eighth grade, off the bus to safety before the bus blew up. Okay, just in time. Kia has only been a bus driver for three years, and she said her maternal instinct guided her to evacuate the bus. So... You know, Kia Rusav, a hero in every yes. sense of the word. A hero, Big hero. In every sense yeah. of the word. I mean. As soon as she got the kids off the bus, it blew up? Yes. Man, and all I'm... them parents need to get together and do something for this woman. The yeah. school board need to do something for this woman. The state need to do something mm-hmm. for this woman. Yeah. 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 Seriously. And the young girl that saw the flames. There was a young teenage girl that saw the flames from the bus. She ran across the street to tell the bus driver. She's a hero, too. Yeah. I saw that story on the news. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, they need to give her. Saving people lives. Fortunately, it's good the bus wasn't loaded with more kids. It was just seven, yeah. eight. Like, it could have yeah. been 30 kids on the bus, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right about that. And she was calm. She didn't panic, you know, which I'm sure it didn't make the kids panic. So, yeah, our hats yeah. are definitely off to you, Miss Kia Rizal. Saving lives. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after. We will play around. round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round. Would you rather? Would you rather fly private for one half the cost or fly commercial in coach for free? Which one? Half the cost of private? Mm-hmm. Half the cost. You can't be free, though. Wait, what? <laughs> free? Uh, you can be free because I've had that. I'm going to be, be right there in coach. In the middle seat. In that middle I'm be seat. Right there too. In the middle seat. Yes, I'm I am. Going I'm, I'm right. going to hit and just go half the price for private. You go oh! ahead. Boy. You go ahead. Right, Junior. Boy, hold up. Hold up. Hold Come on, up. Junior. Oh, I like it. Hold up. Hold up. What, boy. Steve? Boy. <laughs> what? Boy, let me tell you something. Get your ass back there next to Tommy and sit down in that damn seat. <laughs> why, why can't he fly private? Okay, for half cool. the cost. You ready? Okay, uh-huh. okay, okay, here we go. Let's do this right here. From where to where? Give me a flight. Okay, from uh, LA to Atlanta to Houston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Atlanta to Houston. Uh-huh. Uh, you want a you want a big jet, medium sized jet, what you want? A medium jet, huh? Medium jet. Thirty-three thousand. Uh-huh. Now half of that is fifteen, right? Oh, right, eighteen? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna mm-hmm. get next yeah. time. You know, Tommy, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your peanut bag. <laughs> you change your mind, Junior. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I didn't know. That private yeah. is real, boy. I didn't it's know. Real. You appreciate it, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. New York to L.A. Go ahead. 70,000. Oh, wow. So then Easy. you would, you should fly 70, coach. 70,000. Two then, Steve. With those I'm prices. I'm taking price. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather be you remembered for... No. No. Would you rather be remembered for being musty or for being terrible in bed? Musty. What? See, that's why I stink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Because I was in that bedroom last night raising hell. Getting it in. <laughs> Go, get, going to get work in, up in there. Damn, Steve, you strong this morning. Yeah, that's what they said last night, too, partner. <laughs> Yeah. Holla at your boy. I was in there ripping it up last night. I know good hell well I stink. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry about that. Yeah, must <laughs> All right. Uh, would you rather hit your toe on the bedpost or have a hangnail? Oh, no. Give me that hangnail. Yeah, hangnail. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Toe on that post. That toe is deadly. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. How did Joe go That's some pain. Joe toe, what'd you mm-hmm. say? Father. <laughs> Father of God. <laughs> <laughs> I 
got Chief. a question. I got a would you rather for Junior. <laughs> What's that up? Mm. Uh-oh. Would you rather go outside wearing headsets or a visor? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. Junior, answer the question. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I'm going to actually take the visor, Uncle. Why would I wear that? Cool. Like, yeah, dog, that's going to be a lot of lines. <laughs> <laughs> In print? All right. Yeah, that's that's today's round of Would You Rather. Steve, shut it down. All right. Coming up, it is our last break of the day, and uh, we'll close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day on this Wednesday, hump day. Yep. Um, Steve, you have some closing for us. Yeah. Enlighten you know, us, please. Uh, we were almost having a conversation um, on the radio off air. And we were jokingly talking about the would you rather. And the would you rather was... Would you rather fly coach absolutely free or get half price on private? And, you know, look, the, the, the smart money move is free ticket, coach, you don't have to pay. That's the smart money move. So we were off the air talking because I picked half price private. And uh, we were talking about it, and I was just explaining to the crew why I choose to pick it that way. And see, it's because it's an interesting philosophy. First of all, I want all of you to be aware of something. Uh, when, when God gives you what you ask for, and it's usually a bit more, because God would do exceedingly and abundantly over all you can think or ask. So whatever it is you ask God for, there's a great possibility that you will get more. Now, when he gives it to you, I accept it, and I accept the responsibility that comes with it. In that, I'm not going to go back to where I was once God has placed me in a certain position. It doesn't make any sense. And I was telling the crew, the reason I don't go back is because I don't look back. See, once God gets me through a situation, I accept the fact that he's gotten me through it and I move forward. That's why I don't allow people to hold me to my past. I don't allow bloggers to hold me to my past. I don't allow haters to hold me to my past. I've made lots of mistakes in my past, but God has forgiven me for all my mistakes. I've righted all my ways that I used to have. And I'm on and I'm on an upward and forward trajectory. So I'm not gonna go back. You know, uh, we used to have this guy on our show, on our radio show, and I'm not gonna mention his name, but all he did was talk about saving money. Saving money, saving money. And that's good. But one of his big things was to cut back. Stop doing this. Stop driving your car, carpool. Buy one razor and rinse it off and let it last a year. You know, uh, cut your cable off, save money. And I was just sitting here looking at him. So finally, I just couldn't take it no more because it goes against the philosophy that I have that I try to share with people. Instead of finding ways to cut back, why don't you make more? Now, if you don't like that philosophy, then this show ain't for you. But if you truly believe that God is in the blessing business, which he is, why would God bless you with cable and then ask you to stop watching cable? Why would God bless you with a car and then tell you to find a way not to drive it, carpool? Now, if you think that makes sense for you, then go ahead and let it make sense for you. But one of the big reasons I don't go back is because I don't look back. Now, you can, you can look at this thing any way you choose to. It's really, really up to you. You can look at your glass as half empty, or you can look at that glass as half full. It's all about your viewpoint. I choose to have a more positive, forward-thinking trajectory in my thought pattern. I, look, man, and God is going to give you some things in life. Now, when God gives you the things in life, what you going to do? You, what, you going to ignore the blessing? Think about this for a minute. Do you know I once told a guy named uh, Habib, he owned a store in Dallas, Texas called Silhouettes. 
And I had a comedy club, Vuku Ray and the Steve Harvey Comedy House. I used to go up to his store. And for my birthday one year, he gave me a pair of Maury alligator shoes. And it was the first time I'd ever had a pair of Maury alligator shoes. I had just come out of homelessness and I was on straight struggle. I just got on Showtime at the Apollo. And as a gift, he gave me a pair of $750 Maury alligator big block croc shoes. I put them shoes on. Man, I never felt so good in my life. It's 1991 now, 1990. But you know what I told Habib? I said, Habib, I will never ever as long as I live, pay $750 for a pair of shoes. He said, Steve, this is an investment in you. You do not know this, but you are going to be a star. You will come back to me and you will buy many more of these. Watch and see. I told Habib, I said, there's no way, dog. But he saw something in me. God put him in my path to teach me a lesson. And do you know he was right? I started rolling, getting on TV, started touring, getting it good. I went back in there and I would point at so many alligator shoes on that wall. I had a color alligator for every color shirt I had. And I did the very thing I said I would never do. And then I learned something from that. One day God gonna give it to you. Money is a tool. Money serves no purpose in the bank. It's just over there. You have a lot of money. If you don't, spend, if you don't buy nothing with it, what you got it for? You gonna die with them t-shirts on? You gonna die with that little raggedy car? No, I'm gonna go buy a new one. Listen, y'all, God is in the blessing business. So when this man, I just couldn't have him on my show no more, talking about cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, cutting back. When I'm steady telling people, man, go to God, increase your value, let God show you what he can do. And I got a man on the show talking about cut back, cut back, cut back. For what? Man, God is in to give you more business. Why would God take you to another level and then not let you enjoy it? And ain't no more levels? No, nah, man, God got a lot of levels. I'm going to go see what all he got for me. That's what I'm going to do. That's my philosophy. I ain't going back because I ain't looking back. Give me that half price private jet. Thank you very much. Those are my closing remarks. Oh, uh, Y'all have a good day today. Talk to God. He'd absolutely love to hear from you. Tell God what you want. He'd probably give it to you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 